In this video, we're going to be looking at integration and area under curves. Before we carry on this video, you must have done integration first and know how to integrate and be confident at it. Okay, so what do you see different here to your normal integration? Is this five and the two? These are called the limits. Now let's have a look at how we use them. Okay, so the first step, we don't need to worry about those limits. We're just going to simply integrate. And of course, you should be good at integration. You simply add one to the power and then divide it by the number in front. For example, the two here is going to become three. And that six is going to be divided by that new power three. Let's have a look at how that worked out. Okay, so we've done the integration. Now, the answer needs to be left in square brackets and the limits need to still be on, but they're gonna to move to the right hand side. This is just to show that we've integrated, but we've not yet used the limits. Let's tidy this up a little bit before we continue. And now we're going to use these limits. How do we use them? So this expression we've made by integrating, we're gonna throw the upper limit five into it. And we're also gonna put the lower limit two into it. And those two answers, we're gonna subtract them. So it's going to be the expression five into it, subtract the expression with two into it. And you can see I've done that here. In the first part, all the X has been replaced with five subtract and the expression again, but the x's have been replaced with two and that can all go into your calculator. And we get 318. Okay, now we need to work out the area under the curve. So how do we do that? This area which is shaded can be worked out by a simple calculation. One as simple as what we did just earlier. It's this calculation here. You integrate the curve with these limits. And the limits are between those x boundaries you wanted to work out the area between. And we wanted the area between x equals three, that vertical line x equals three, and that vertical line x equals two. And of course the area is between the curve and the x axis. And that all of that can simply be worked out with this integration I've got here on the right. Okay, let's see if you remember how to work this out, this integration with limits. Okay, so first step, we just simply integrate it. Add one to the powers and divide it by the number in front. So we put the answer in square brackets and we put the limits on the right because we've not yet used the limits. And simplifying that down gives us simply x cubed. Now we're going to throw in the limits. So we put the upper limit in, three into the expression x cubed minus putting the lower limit into the expression two and we subtract them and remember you can just put this straight into your calculator now and that gives us 19 i've written unit squared because we've got ourselves an area now you might be asking yourself what happens to plus c because whenever we integrate we always have plus c but with the limits we've ignored that plus c and the reason being is had you kept the plus c when you're subtracting both expressions would have had a plus c and they would have disappeared anyways. So you don't need that plus C. Okay, so here we've got a slightly trickier question. We need to work out this area and it's bounded by the curve and also another line. So how do we work this out? Now, what I'm thinking first is I want to work out the equation of that line, which will help me work out that coordinate Q because that's definitely going to be useful. Now we know the line goes through these two points here. It goes for 0, 30 and 2, 16. So to work out the equation of that line, let's first work out the gradient. And you should be able to work out the gradient is change in y over change in x. And we get minus seven. Now, whenever you're doing gradient, make sure you go the same way. For example, I've gone 30 minus 16. Now I must go the same way when I'm doing the subtraction of the x's. I can't suddenly do two minus zero now, I need to do 0 minus 2. Since we know the y-intercept already, we can just put that into y because it makes plus c. It's not the way I prefer. I prefer using the other formula, y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. But in this case, I can see the y-intercept, so I'll just put it in straight away. And I've got the equation of that line. 
Now I'm going to work out Q. Now where is Q? It's on the x-axis. So we know Q's y-coordinate. The y-coordinate of Q is zero. So we put y in a zero and that allows us to solve the x-coordinate of Q. So putting y in a zero here and we'll simply solve this now. And we get x is 30 over seven. So we can put that as the Q-coordinate. And this is going to be really useful because now we can work out that triangle here, the triangle I've shaded in. Because if we work out that area of that little triangle there, the remaining area which we need to work out, you've probably already got an idea how we're going to do that. But let's just concentrate on the triangle for now. Okay, so for area of a triangle, we've done half base times height. Now, what is the length of the base? For the length of the base, we just look at the x coordinate of P and the x coordinate of Q. Subtracting them gives us how long the base is. And that's simply 16 over seven. Now, what is the height of this triangle? It's simply the y coordinate of P. And the y coordinate of P is 16. And we get our answer, it's one to eight over seven. Now we need to move on to work out the other bit, the area underneath the curve. Now area underneath the curve, bounded by the curve and the x-axis, you should know how to do it from the previous example. And it's simply the integration of the curve with the limits two and zero. Because that area we're trying to work out under the curve is between the x values two and zero. So those are the limits. And hopefully we can do this, we can do this integration with the limits. Okay, so we've integrated it and we kept the answer in square brackets. Integration, sh integration should be simple by now. You add one to the power, divide the number in front by that new power. Okay, but we haven't yet used the limits. So how are we gonna apply these limits now? Remember, you put the upper limit in, which is two, and then you put the lower limit in, which is zero, and you minus the two, that's it. And we get eight. So now we've worked out both areas, that little triangle and this shaded bit underneath the curve. So we can go ahead and work out the final answer, the area of that total shaded region. So it's going to be the eight plus the one to eight over seven. And that gives us the one eight four over seven. And if you can see all the working out in one page, that's here for you. This is everything we've done. And there we have it. I hope you found that video useful. Support us by liking, subscribing, and share this with your friends. And if you still got some more questions on anything, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where you'll find your questions answered.